Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How you doing, Laquan? You okay? Uh, we just hope that you all are uh, out there taking care of your bodies. Um, you know, of, of course, this COVID pandemic is still uh, existing, still affecting people. People are still uh, dying. Uh, we just pray that you all are keeping y'all first and that you are, um, you know, um, taking care of your bodies through foods, different foods and stuff like that. Um, today, we're going to get into the Ten Commandments, followed by uh, going into, you know, just introducing the books of the Bible, going over those. Um, and then we're going to get into today's topic, which is um, Jeroboam's fate. We're still talking about the Kingdom series. All right. So uh, let me do something real quick. So let's get off into the Ten Commandments. Okay. Let me know how my sound is out there too. Uh, I'm not really sure how this uh how my sound is. So please let me know uh, in the chat. Let's chat. All right, let's get it. All right, so first things first, you shall have no other gods before me. What can be considered another god? Clothes. Yourself. Yourself, of course. Yeah, good answer. People can uh, keeping people can worship themselves. It is people that worship themselves and consider themselves God, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else? Toys. Toys, right? Anything pretty much that we put over the Most High, and we honor and we honor and respect and fear with our hearts. Is considered idol idolatry. You shall have no other gods before me. Okay. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not make for yourself an idol. All right. So, what, name some examples of some physical idols that somebody might have carved and made up. Buddha statue. Like a Buddha statue, right? Yeah. A Buddha statue would be that, you know. Yep. You shall have you shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not misuse the name of Yahuwah your Elohim. How can we misuse the name of Yahuwah? By not upholding it. By not upholding the most high by his name. No. What are we talking about? By making a vow. Right, if you make a vow or you swear in his name that, you know, something happened. Like if you make, first of all, if you make a vow in, in his name and you don't honor it, of course that. But then if you swear in his name, right, and that something happened, that an event happened, and then it's false, then that's, that's, that's you misusing his name. That's using his name in vain, right? So that, um, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. How can we keep the Sabbath day holy? Rest. We can rest. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. What else? What is this showing here? Congregation. Read congregation. We can come congregate. Right? Mm -hmm. What else? Watch VeggieTales. We can watch VeggieTales. Pray. 
We can pray, right? We can try Veggie Tales. We can watch any shows. But in regards to shows, we can watch any shows that do what? That do what? That pertain to the Bible. That pertain to the Bible. Speak up to. Okay. Let's sit up, son. That pertain to the Bible, right? Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land your who your Elohim is giving you. Honor your father and your mother. So how can we honor our father and mother? By listening to their instructions. By listening to their instructions and what else? Not give and fall out to their name. Not keep them with a good name. Not, not, yeah, you want to keep them with a good name. So even if you have a falling out, I think that's what you were trying to say, then if you have a falling out, that don't give you freedom to go and say things about them that's negative, right? So, and what else? You can give them gifts, um, you know, keep them with a good name, uh, follow the instructions, right? Because they are the physical representation of Yahuwah, our parents. All right, they have authority over our lives. Okay? They have a certain level of authority in that that's given to them by the most high. All right? Let me see something real quick. Real quick, I want to read something too in regards to that commandment in Exodus. Since we're talking about it, Exodus 21. I think that's Exodus 21. Watch this. Look at this. It says, and he who cursed, this is Exodus 21 and verse 17. And he who curses his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. He who curses his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. All right. So speaking against them, cursing them. Like, yeah. So if you. Uh, see, I think this is more, that curse is more talking about, um, you know, actually putting a curse against them, like wishing something bad happened to them. You know, I'll look more in depth into that, but speaking against them in a way or speaking a curse against your, your mother and your father is considered wicked, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a person that does that um, will be put to death according to that commandment, according to that law. Right? So we want to definitely keep our um, mother and father with a good name. All right? That's very important. All right? Uh, let's see. You shall not murder. You shall not murder. All right? So what is murder? Tell me what murder is. Murder is to kill somebody for Huh? Murder is you're trying to kill somebody for a reason, or for robbing, or to hate someone. That's considered murder. All right. So, um, so when you when you hate when you you if you have uh, have hatred against somebody, and say if you know, there's a falling out between you and another person. You was friends with somebody. Y'all said some words that hurt each other. And you don't, you, how about you go home and you really don't like what they said. And you decide to get your gun and go back and go and do some bodily harm. That's considered murder. That's considered murder. Versus if it was, uh, versus if you go and try to do somebody some harm. And they end up defending, defending themselves and kill you. You know what I'm saying? That would be self-defense. Somebody died, yeah, but that's self-defense, though. That's not murder. Mm -hmm. You see that? That's self-defense. All right, so you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not commit adultery. What is adultery for the man? You remember? Um, adultery for a man is when you divorce an old wife for a new wife for no reason. Yeah. That's committed adultery. Right. 
that that's considered adultery when he divorces when he divorces his first wife and go and get a, a second wife without the first wife actually committing some type of fornication or adultery herself right mm -hmm. so that would be on his behalf adultery he can't go get a, a he can't divorce his first wife to get another wife right mm -hmm. to um, if she has not committed adultery so that's the only way he can divorce his wife is if she committed adultery mm -hmm. right now what about for the woman a marriage and go with another man, mm -hmm. that's when they don't treat. Say that again. Say that. <clears throat> when a woman sneaks out. Speak of, up, man. Oh, speak up. When a woman sneaks out of her marriage and she go with another man, that committed adultery. That's committed adultery. Right. For the woman, right? Okay. <sighs> okay. So you should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not steal. Now we talk about this, now when we talk about uh, this woman here, this woman, what she's doing is she's looking to see if um, there is some, if the store clerk is actually watching her, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know if she's poor or if she has money. You know what I mean? She could be poor, she could have money. Maybe she just like to steal, who knows? Let's pretend she's poor. Is it all right for her to steal if she's poor? No. It's not all right, right? Mm -hmm. There's no exception. The law, say, the commandment says you should not steal. So even if you're poor, that doesn't give you license to go and steal, mm -hmm. right? Correct. You should not give false testimony against your neighbor. You should not give false testimony against your neighbor. All right, so here you have an owner of the house. You have a man holding the bat, pointing at his friend, or pointing at another man. We don't know if they're friends or not. And he's blaming him for hitting his, hitting, hitting his window, right? Maybe they was playing baseball and hit the ball through the window. Who knows, right? So, um, now when we talk about neighbor, what is that word neighbor? Define what neighbor means. Uh, neighbor means in Israel, it's family. In Israel, yeah. So in Israel, the word neighbor means family. Now here, it's showing more like some next door neighbors, which in Israel, in ancient Israel, that could have been the case. They could have been living next door to each other, but that's not exactly what the word means, right? In this situation, we'll just pretend like this. This is ancient Israel. Let's 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 use that as an example. Like, if this is ancient Israel, their family. And one is, uh, he's blaming his brother or he's blaming his cousin for falsely saying that he hit the ball through the window, you know? All right, and we are instructed to love our neighbor as ourselves. Now, when certain crimes was committed in Israel, they was put to death. So let's, what if somebody um, bared false witness, right? And said that, um, you committed adultery. So then, you know what that means? They're trying to sentence you to death because the adulterers were sentenced to death. They were supposed to be stoned to death, right? Adulterers were supposed to be stoned to death, all right? So, you know, that's, you know, that's, the, that's how powerful that is when you're talking about bearing false witness. It's not good to bear false witness. Always be honest when you, Go accuse somebody, make sure you stand on facts. Make sure it's the truth. All right, do not make up anything on the, on anybody because it come with harsh penalties, especially in ancient Israel, but even now, you know, it come with a bad name. You know, if somebody commit adultery in society, they say that they are, um, they call them home wreckers. You know what I mean? That's not good. You know, it's not good to be a home wrecker. You know, like if you was talking about adultery, so, but that's all because of somebody bearing false witness on them. Now, if somebody bear false witness on you and say you did something, then you 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 walking around with a bad name and you didn't deserve it. You see that? How about this? How about as innocent people in jail or in prison 
because somebody lied on them. They bear a false witness on them, said they committed a murder that they did not commit. And in all reality, that person that lied on them, they the ones committed the murder. They're bearing false witness, right? You should not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. You should not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. What does it mean to covet? To lust after someone's possession. To have a lust or a desire, a strong desire um, after someone's possessions, right? You should not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. You know, maybe she's sitting here and again, that word neighbor is family. So what if she was lusting after her brother's or her sister's possessions? They got a nice house, nice car, right? Something she been wanting. And because she don't have it, she want to lust after theirs. You know what I'm saying? That is coveting. Because what coveting does, what coveting does is it leads you to commit other sins. So how about she can't control that desire, right? And if she can't control that desire um, with coveting, what's going to lead her to do is going to, she's going to maybe go commit murder so that she can steal that person's possessions. You see that? But all that, when she plotting and doing all of that, guess what she doing? Committing idolatry. You should have no other gods before me. Right. So when you do that, you 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 putting yourself, you breaking more and more laws. The first law you breaking when you decide to sin is you shall have no other gods before me. Right? You shall have no other gods before me. So she end up breaking all laws, making herself an abomination to the most high. Right. To the point where now he gotta decide whether he wanna have mercy on her or he wanna put her to death. And if you put her to death, he's not wrong because I gave you certain commandments, right? So, all right, so that's the end of the Ten Commandments. When we touch on the books of the Bible, all right, so this, this is like a, a, a Bible chart, Bible, is, and it's got a bookcase here with all 66 books of the Bible, all right? Some of you might out there read the Apocrypha as well, but this is just for the 66 books. You got um, in regards, so this the different sections, the law, history, poetry, you got major prophets, you got the minor prophets, you got gospels, history, epistles to the churches, and you got epistles to friends and general epistles. What is an epistle? Epistle is like a lot of words. Nope, it's a letter. The word epistle means just means a letter. Mm -hmm. All right, so for the most part, most of the epistles is what Paul wrote. But then you have other epistles that was uh, written by Peter, okay? Written by Peter, written by John, written by James. These epistles was, was sent to the different churches to keep them in order, to teach them. Because they couldn't, the gospel was being spread at a rapid pace, so they couldn't always reach them by um, going to the actual land. Like, so if they would, read, they would send a, a letter to like Ephesus. So the, the, the epistle Ephesians, the letter Ephesians is, to the church of Ephesus, all right, made up of Jews and Gentiles, all right? So they will be addressing certain things in here pertaining to what's going on in the church, all right? So you got those things. You got you got the, the epistles. You got the gospels here, all right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You got the history in the New Testament. We're dealing with New Testament right now. I'm going to go backwards, right? So you got a, uh, let me stand up. So you got the book of Acts here. So the book of Acts, that's the history in the New Testament, right? Because it's just giving you the accounts of what happened with the 12 apostles. And Paul, who became, well, Paul is a part of the 12 apostles, but he was added later, all right? Do you know who Judas Iscariot is? 
he was the one that betrayed Yeshua, right? Right, so after him, they needed to get another apostle, and that's where Paul came in, all right? Um, Mashiach, he elected, he elected uh, Paul himself. All right, so the book of Acts, for the most part, is a, a lot of it is about Paul, actually, and what he, how he came to be a believer, because he wasn't always a believer in Mashiach, how he came to be a believer. Um, and then the things he did after while he was a believer in Mashiach, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so you got the Gospels, you got the Epistles, Acts. You have Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, right? These are the minor um, prophets. Mm -hmm. Then you got the major prophets. You got Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, which is written by Jeremiah. So that's really like one book. You know, it was written by Jeremiah, right? Ezekiel and Daniel, all right? Ezekiel and Daniel. Um, so then you have, so you have that. Then you have the poetry or the right, you know, or the writings, right? And those are. You got Job, let me see, Job, got Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, all of these are the writings or poetry. They got them listed as poetry here, but some people call them writings, right? Writings, then you got uh, the history of the Old Testament, all right? Joshua. Judges, Ruth, First Samuel, Second Samuel, First Kings, Second Kings, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Now this history, when you dissect section in the history, range from when Moses died and Joshua rose up. So that's what the book of Joshua is about, right? So it's his whole history up until the time he died. Then you got the different judges that ruled in the land. That's this book about. Then you got Ruth, who was um, who was a Gentile. She was a Moabite, who came about during the time where the judges was ruling, and she did ended up marrying Boaz. Okay, so that's where you got Ruth. You got First Samuel and Second Samuel. All right, First Samuel and Second Samuel. Now, King David, King Saul, is mentioned in First Samuel. All right, and that's they're the issues that they had. So in Sam, how Samuel became right, how he was raised up in righteousness. So that's what 1 Samuel is about. He was raised up, he was born. Um, a Nazarite vow was given to Samuel. He became um, a judge in Israel. Um, he was raised um, with priests and he ended up anointing both Saul and David. When Saul started to sin, he went and uh, the Most High told him to go and anoint David, okay? And David, we know that they had, like Saul hated David, right? You got 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. All right, so when you look at this history, it ranged all the way from Joshua when the, first, when the Israelites first went into the land up until... Um, when when the Israelites came out of Babylonian captivity, okay, when they came out of Babylonian captivity, this is when they uh, had. Um, this is where where this history is recorded. You know, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther remained in Persia. She married um, uh, Ahasuerus, right? Esther met, uh, married him. Right. So and there was Israelites, you know, in, in other lands still living even after they came back from Babylonian captivity. OK. And then you got the Torah or law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. All right. So how the Israelites came to be about. The, our, the ancient forefathers, you know, from down from from Adam on down to Noah, uh, you have. You know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
and then how Jacob and had his 12 sons and how they went into Egypt, okay? How they went into Egypt. All right, so that's that. All right, so that's the books of the Bible. All right, so now let's get into today's topic. All right, so we have the kings of Israel. We're doing a split kingdom series. We're going to be on this for a while. The kings of Israel. So we're talking about now, today, we're still talking about Jeroboam. What the, Jeroboam's fate is today's topic, okay? Jeroboam's fate is today's topic. And so we're going to go off into Jeroboam, what happened to him. What do you remember about Jeroboam? Well, we have 70... He married the uh, 700 wives? Nope. No, sir. Wrong king. Think about it. We went over it. We didn't get in here last week, but we went over it uh, this week. We gonna I mean we went over it the week before. I'm sorry. You remember? Say that again. Was he with Judah? Nope. You should know this, that he wasn't with Judah. Was he a servant? Servant to who? David? Nope. No, sir. Solomon? Yep. He was a servant to Solomon. Mm -hmm. okay. And so what happened? Do you remember what happened between him and Solomon? They hated, hated each other. They ended up that way. Yep. Yep. All right. So let's just read about it. So for time's sake, let's read about it. Um, so we got, go to 1 Kings 14. And we're going to read that, a big part of that chapter. And it's going to show what happened to Jeroboam. Now Jeroboam was a sinner. So just to give you a recap, Jeroboam was a sinner. He ended up, the Most High put him as king over the northern ten tribes after Solomon started to sin. Jeroboam uh, started to commit idolatry. And uh, he, what he did was he reared up, you know, two golden calves and told Israel to serve them, right? So and when he told Israel to serve them, um, he led Israel to go off and be... Uh, he led Israel to go off and worship other gods. You see that? Mm -hmm. So he made them worship two golden calves. Well, he oh he created it. And what now? What commandment did he break doing that? You remember? Uh, is it the the? Is it the first commandment? Yeah, that one, and what else? Because you should have no other gods before me, right? Mm -hmm. All right, and what other commandment he break? He calls him to break. The, the sixth commandment? No, you should know this. What other commandment he calls them to break? I got the second one. And what does that say? This, the second commandment says you should have 
Would you not bow down to any idol? Absolutely. Yeah. So he caused them to break those commandments. You got to remember that. He caused them to break those commandments. Um, <clears throat> and so, um, so right now he's living as a sinner. So that's why he's going to end up dying because, you know, an, an unrighteous death, though, like not living a long life and dying. But no, he, he dies. His house, his household. Not, well, no, I, I can't say unrighteous death. His household is going to meet an unrighteous fate. Right. So we'll see. We're going to read about it, though. First Kings 14 and verse one. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, and I pray thee, and disguise thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam, and get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there is Ahijah the prophet, which told me that I should be king over this people. So Ahijah the prophet before Jeroboam became king, told him that you're going to rule over the 10 tribes of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. And so when he told him, he told him that, and then immediately after, you know, like he told him this, and then Jeroboam, he didn't tell him how it was going to happen. So Jeroboam still wanted to make peace with um, the southern kingdom. And it did not happen, but it was supposed to happen. It was supposed to be that he was supposed to be the king over 10 tribes, over the northern 10 tribes. So what happened was you had him go to Rehoboam and Rehoboam decided not to make peace with Jeroboam in the northern kingdom. So um, it was it was uneasy since then, like and they they've been split. And that's why, you know, uh, every king that came after the northern kingdom of Israel had their kings and the southern kingdom had their kings, right? Which we're going to be touching on both. Uh, yeah, so let me pick back up at uh, verse, um, in the middle of verse 2. And get thee to Shiloh, behold, there is a Ahijah, the prophet, which told me that I should be king over Israel, over this people. And take with thee ten loaves and cracknels and a cruise of honey and go to him. He shall tell thee what shall become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so and arose and went to Shiloh and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see for his eyes were set by reason of his age. And Yahuwah said unto said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam come to ask a thing of thee for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shalt thou say unto her, for it is, for it shall be when she cometh in that she shall feign herself to be another woman. So she'll pretend to be another woman. Right? Mm -hmm. Verse 6, And it's, it was so, when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, as he, she came in at the door, that he said, Come in, thou wife of Jeroboam. Why feignest thou thyself to be another? For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. Go tell Jeroboam, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. For as much as I exalted thee from among the people, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it thee, and yet thou has not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments and who followed me with all his heart to do that only which was right in mine eyes, but has done evil above all that were before, before thee. For thou has gone and made thee other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger and has cast me behind thy back. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam as a man takes away dumb, it, it 
till it be all gone. So he's going to take away the remnant of the house of uh, Israel or the house of the northern kingdom. Well, I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. He's going to take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, right? The remnant of the house of Jeroboam. You see that? So, yeah. So this baby dying is by the design of the Most High because Jeroboam is sinning. All right. And so that's why he's going to die. So verse 10, it says, therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisses against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam as a man takes away dung it all, it, it, till it be all gone. Verse 11, him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat for Yahuwah hath spoken it. Verse 12, arise thou therefore get thee to thine own house and when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die and all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him for he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave because in him there is found some good thing toward Yahuwah Elohim of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. So look at that. This little baby is innocent. The Most High is going to allow it to be um, buried, right? Because they, what sin have it committed? Versus Jeroboam's other children was was adults, so they knew the difference between good and evil. But this baby did not know the difference between good and evil. So the Most High is saying this baby is going to die, but I'm going to allow it to be buried because there is some good thing found in him toward me. Verse 14, moreover, Yahuwah shall raise up a king over Israel who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day. But what? Even now. So it's going to happen uh, really, really soon. You know what I mean? Like this is already, this process is already started. Is basically what he's saying because they're, they're going to lose their baby. And then, you know, close events, some events after that is going to happen where Jeroboam's sons is going to start to get slain, right? Verse 15. For Yahuwah shall smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall, he shall root up Israel out of this good land, which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their groves provoking Yahuwah to anger. And he shall give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, who did sin and who made Israel to sin. And Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Terzah. And when she came to the threshold of the door, the child died. Verse 18. And they buried him and all Israel mourned for him according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spake by the hand of his servant Ahijah the prophet. All right. So let's go. So all of that came about. And let's go over to chapter 15 and verse 25. Well, it's chapter 15, first Kings, chapter 15, verse 25. Let me do something real quick. Chapter 15, verse One second, I can post this on here.
right, we're back. So 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 25, and it reads, And Nadab the son of Jeroboam began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned over Israel two years. So Nadab is a son of Jeroboam, right? And he did evil in the sight of Yahuwah and walked in the way of his father and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. And Baasha, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar, conspired against him. And Baasha, which belonged to the Philistines, excuse me, I'm sorry, conspired against him. And Baasha smote him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines. For Nadab and all Israel laid siege to Gibbethon. Even in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, did Baasha slay him and reigned in his stead. So even in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, did Baasha slay him. Uh, Baasha Asha slayed Nadab, right? So he slayed Nadab, which is Jeroboam's son. Remember, Jeroboam's whole house is going to be wiped out. Okay. Verse 29. And it came to pass when he reigned that he smote all the house of Jeroboam. He left not to Jeroboam any that breathed until he had destroyed him according to um, according unto the saying of Yahuwah, which he spake by his servant Ahijah the Shilonite, because of the sins of Jeroboam which he sinned and which he made Israel sin by his provocation wherewith he provoked Yahuwah Elohim of Israel to anger. All right, so that's Jeroboam's fate, all right? Fate meaning, you know, um, something that's to come to pass that's of a higher power. That higher power is the most high, all right? And in this case, Jeroboam sinned, but see, it's, it's, it's weird because, see, the thing that he did, he did it to himself. So it's like he really killed himself. See, so when we sin, as Jeroboam did, you end up hurting yourself. You're not hurting the most high. You will make him jealous. But he's got to keep his word now. So he got to allow the curses to come to pass that come with you sinning. So when you start worshiping other gods, when you start committing adultery, now he got to allow you to be put to death because he told you not to do it. And you did it anyway. Now, it's instances where he'll have mercy and allow you to live. Like he allowed King David to live once he saw that King David repented. But, you know, because he have mercy. So he can, you know, you can't be mad when he keep his word. You know what I mean? Like he keep his word um, pretty much like he keep his word and he show mercy at times. He keep his word even when he show mercy. Like, so if he in the situation with King David, it's not like he didn't keep his word and um, in not putting David to death. He just showed mercy to him. But he definitely acknowledged that you sinned. I saw what you did, David, and you're wrong. David repented. Therefore, he repented wholeheartedly and accepted his punishment, which was his firstborn son being murdered by Bathsheba. And so uh, the son he had by Bathsheba but was end up end up dying, not murdered, but ended up dying. And when she died, when he died, he accepted that, David. So that's where the mercy came in, is that David holding himself accountable versus somebody like Jeroboam. He kept sinning. Even after he saw the glory of the Most High, he still reared up two golden calves and just pretty much, in a way, spitting in, in the Most High's face. You see that? So... That's where the Most High had to allow certain things to come to pass, which was his whole household being put to death. Okay? And with that, I say shalom, Shabbat shalom. Uh, we're going to wrap it up right here. Um, in regards to the children's lesson, we'll see y'all next week. We're still doing the Kingdom series. Um, we will be uh, having praise and worship, followed by today's main lesson. See y'all soon. Shabbat shalom.